To be honest, if I may use a profanity, I think it's bullshit when people say that, you know, I only sleep four hours. No, you don't, or then you are certainly not working at your maximum capacity. Today, I'm meeting Alexander Stubb, the former Prime Minister of Finland, and even more importantly, a legend in the triathlon scene. Last year, alongside his active lifestyle, Alex was crowned the European champion of his age group on the long distance triathlon. I can't name a better example of someone combining an ambitious career with pro level athletic success. I can't hide it. This is me meeting one of my biggest idols. Let's see what we can learn from him. Pleasure to meet you, Alex. You are the prototype of what I'm aiming for. One of Finland's most successful athletes with an ambitious career. My question to you is, are you a pro athlete? I guess my answer is first, how low can you go if you're aiming to be like me? I mean, that's desperate, man. <laughs> Uh, no, I, I do train quite seriously and I started training quite seriously around 2008. Am I a pro athlete? Absolutely not. Then I'd have to double my training hours. Why do you do triathlon? Well, it all started because I kept on getting injured from running. You know, I'm 80 kilos, so I'm quite a big guy. Uh, and then my physio told me you need to start swimming and, and, and cycling. I said I hate both. I got in touch with Antti Hagqvist, who is pretty much Mr. Triathlon in, in Finland. Uh, and he coached me to do uh, a half Ironman in Joroinen uh, in 2008, and I haven't looked back since. What kind of decisions would I have to make to get on this pro path? This is a little bit of a sidestep, but I wanted to become a professional golfer. So I went and started in the US with a small uh, golf scholarship, but noticed very quickly that golf is not my thing or that I'm not good enough. I played in a tournament with Phil Mickelson, I just came to the conclusion I don't have his hands. So what I would do is probably hedge your bets, uh, which basically means that try to get a scholarship from somewhere, uh, you know, for academic and perhaps even, you know, triathlon reasons mm -hmm. and combine that because then you basically have the guarantee of an education. But you have to be patient. I think that's what it takes. Uh, and you have to be smart. You should not overtrain. I think a lot of people go completely gung-ho mm. uh, when they're young. So they need to have a really good coach, really good team around them. Is it a good goal to become a pro athlete? <laughs> yeah, why not? But you have to love it. You know, it has to come from your heart. It has to be a passion. I think it would be a lovely life. Having said that, I once did a one month training camp in Lanzarote. And out of that, I was alone for two, months, two weeks. And I've got to say that that made me understand that I don't think I would have ever become a pro athlete. Uh, you know, I put in the 30, 35 hours a week, but uh, to do that for a month, um, it, I, I just didn't have it. Uh. Here's a mystery for us mortals. You work probably between eight to 12 hours a day, depending on the day. Sleep eight hours, train triathlon, travel between two countries. How do you make it work? Well, it's probably easier to make it work now that I'm in the life of academia. It was a bit more complicated when I was in politics. Having said that, when I was in government for eight years, you know, everything was in a silver plate. So, you know, I had my driver, I had my team, I had, you know, hundreds if not thousands of staff who made sure that I would, you know, say the right things at the right time in the right place. I'm very systematic in what I do, so I plan very carefully. So my training weeks are, are very closely planned. You know, if I have a really tough time at work, then I have to you know, go slow on the training because the stress levels are high mentally, then I can't stress myself physically. But I'll give you one example hmm. from yesterday. I had a day trip to Zurich with work. So I had to have a working lunch, uh, give a speech and have a meeting and then fly back. I got up at five in the morning to do half an hour on the water bike just to get the system going. Uh, and I had penciled in two hours at the hotel, in the pool and at the gym before the meeting started. Mm. And I was able to do that. But then the rest of the day I felt very energetic. Of course, then when you come home, uh, you collapse. But it's just a question of organization. And you also have to have mercy on yourself, you know, so, say if you have small kids and things like that then uh, trying to manage everything can be a little bit strenuous. And you have to sleep. I mean, that's one of the things people don't understand. You know, I'm a sucker for my eight hours, and you really need that. And it's, to be honest, if I may use a profanity, I think it's bullshit when people say that, you know, I only sleep four hours. No, you don't, or then you are certainly not working at your maximum capacity. Some people might find your superhuman sports performances annoying as, yeah. as heck. And you might drive like a bicycle route before someone gets out of bed. Does this bother you? How do you handle it? Not really. Um, I mean, I understand where it comes from that, you know, I, I think it's a natural inclination. It's a, it's a human feeling that if someone is doing something that you kind of want to do, but you're not doing it, then instead of 
you know, thinking about what you could do about it yourself, you say, oh, I don't like that guy, he can't do that, and so on and so forth. I, it doesn't bother me, really, to be honest, because it's my lifestyle, and I think a lot of people who know me, they know that I'm a little bit crazy with this stuff, and mm -hmm. I, I really enjoy it. Um, and and it, it's, it's the way in which I've been able to cope with a lot of difficulties in life, because, you know, politics especially was very stressful, uh, and this was my sort of getaway, my mechanism of, of protecting myself. Then I'm aware that, you know, some people in the media gave me shit for doing triathlons, and how does he have the time, you know, to which I always say that, you know, how does a politician have time to go to the pub and get, get splashed and try to work seriously the next morning? Everyone has their own way of coping with things, and this is mine. And uh, if someone looks up to me and says, that's great, you're my model, that's a nice thing. If someone thinks, oh, how can he do that, I don't like it, he's annoying, then, you know, tough luck. It seems to me that you want to succeed extremely well in almost everything that you do. Do you ever demand too much from yourself? Yeah. I mean, I, I am, I guess, quite hard on myself, but at the same time, you know, the further you go on in life, the softer you get. The toughest times I had in life were probably when I was prime minister. I didn't particularly enjoy it. I know it sounds a bit perverse, but that's just the way it was. It, I, I felt that I could not be myself. I mean, you asked about toning down results and things like that. I remember, for instance, getting a lot of slack from tweeting from a, from a triathlon race uh, when the Russians had shut down uh, an MH17 plane which, of course, you know, I had tweeted about before, but this became you know, a tough thing. So sometimes I'm, sometimes I'm a bit tough on myself, but fortunately I think I can sort of tone down. Alex, do you sometimes really let loose? Yeah, sure. Uh, probably when I'm with the family, you know, we have a few glasses of wine, it's just the four of us, or also when I'm with friends. But the, the problem, you know, letting loose is sort of, it's usually alcohol related or cigar related. And, and so I can't kind of do that in public places, you know, kind of so I, you know, I, I haven't felt the need or urge to go, to go out because the problem is that we live in a world of mobile phones and then, you know, next thing you know, the front page of, of, of the afternoon newspapers. How often do you let loose and can you let loose during racing season? Not during racing season. I mean, I do have a tendency to have a few glasses after a big race. Or, or a PB or something like that, so I allow myself to do that. But I, I sort of joke around that, you know, it's, it's I, I have a, a training season, a racing season, and a wine season. Okay. So, and wine season usually starts, I'd say, after the last race of the year. Tell me, what is the best way to help people in Finland find the joy of exercise? I think you have to lead by way of example. You, you, you can't force people. I think it's just to try to convince people that you know, when they say that I want to enjoy life, you ask the question, okay, what does that mean? And I think enjoyment is li in life is, 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 you know, obviously happiness and meaning, but also energy. And I think you end up getting a lot more energy when you sleep well, when you exercise moderately, and when you eat well. I think if you get that sort of fundamental combo correct, you can live quite a good life, and that will get people moving. I remember, you know, when I was a kid, I actually smoked, right, smoked cigarettes. And I quit when I went into the military when I was 19, on the day that I... And suddenly I noticed, that, wow, the quality of my life just, you know, increased exponentially. Uh, and, and then slowly I got into exercise. But you have to make the choices yourself. You mm. can't force anyone. That's, that's my main point. Thanks, Alex. Thank you. My pleasure.